God bless you today. Today we'll be reading chapter 5 and chapter 6 of the book of Revelation, King James Version. And I have the expository study Bible, so I'll be reading the notes along with the scriptures. And today is the day the Lord has made. So as always, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that God give us a revelation of this word, that this word be hidden in our hearts. So when we face our test trials and tribulations, the word will spring forth from us, from off our lips, the words of Almighty God, and we'll conduct ourselves in the way that God would have us do. And we need Jesus so desperately. Nothing can be done without Jesus. Every day, we deny ourselves, pick up the cross of Christ, and follow Jesus. Eyes on Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. A name that there is no other name above it. Jesus. Sin is the problem. Jesus is the solution. Chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand signifies power of him who sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Now let me say this. Once again, what what we are reading is real. This is not some dream. This is not a fantasy. This is not make-believe. This is real. This all will happen. This will happen. Everything we're reading will happen. This is a fact. Undeniable. There's no debate. The word of Almighty God is fact. So when we read through this, imagine this. Because it's going to happen. The seven seals signify the time of Jacob's trouble is about to begin, which will rapidly bring a conclusion to that which must be done. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. This strong angel is probably Gabriel, as evidenced by Gabriel's appearance to Daniel, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. This implies moral fitness. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look therein. We should look very carefully at the words, no man. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look therein. This pertains to the fact that this book is, is so very, very important. It contains not only the information regarding the coming judgment upon this earth, but as well the message that this judgment, as tendered by God, will ultimately lead to the redemption of the earth. Chapter 5, I mean verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Now once again, um, I want you to imagine this I, as I talk. Please imagine this. As, um, just imagine this as best you can, because this is going to happen. So please listen to the words. Imagine, imagine this right now. So el, when one of the elders said unto me, weep not. State that this man's dilemma has been solved. Behold, behold, the lion of of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof, presents Jesus Christ. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. The crucifixion of Christ is represented here by the word lamb, which refers to the fact that it was it was the cross which redeemed mankind. The slain lamb alone has redeemed all things. Having seven horns, horns denote dominion, and seven denotes total dominion. All of this was done for you and me, meaning that we can have total dominion over the power of darkness in every capacity. So there is no excuse for a lack of victory. 
and seven eyes. The notes total, <clears throat> excuse me, perfect, pure, complete illumination of all things spiritually, which is again made possible for you and me by the cross. If the believer makes the cross the object of his faith, he will never be he will never be drawn away by false doctrine, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth, signifying that the Holy Spirit in all his perfection in his universality functions entirely within the parameters of the finished work of Christ. In other words, it is required that we ever make the cross the object of our faith, which gives the Holy Spirit the latitude and guarantees the dominion and the illumination. <clears throat> Find this in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. So now we'll go to <clears throat> verse 7. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, came and took the book out of the right hand of him, God the Father, who sat upon the throne. All of heaven stands in awe as the land steps forward to take the book. Now imagine that. Are you imagining this? God sitting on his throne with a book in his hand that no one can open. No one can open. No one anywhere can open. But one comes forth whose name is Jesus. And he comes. He is the Lamb of Almighty God. He is worthy. He alone is worthy because of what he did alone is the only thing that could save us from sin. And he comes to the Father and he takes the book. Verse 8, And when he, the Lord Jesus, had taken the book, the four beasts, living creatures, and the four and twenty elders, rep representatives of the church, fell down before the Lamb, proclaims to us the deity of Christ, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. In Greek, this refers to the 24 elders only. All the prayers that have ever come up before God for things to be rectified are about to be answered. My God. Verse 9. And they sung <clears throat> a new song, saying, saying, which only the redeemed can sing. You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Proclaims that by his death, he has acquired a right to approach where no other man could approach and to do what no other one could do. For you were slain, refers to the cross, which has made everything possible and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Proclaims the manner in which redemption was purchased out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation proclaims the fact that salvation secured by the death of Christ universally applies to all classes and peoples of the earth. Verse 10, And have made us unto our God kings and priests. The scripture abundantly proclaims that whatever Jesus has become <clears throat> of the cross, that's what we are also. And we shall reign on earth. Refers to the coming millennial reign. <clears throat> verse 7, verse 11, And I beheld... And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands. 10,000 is the greatest number expressed by the Greek vocabulary. In itself may denote a unlimited number. But we have a quadruple, a quadrupling 10,000 of 10,000 and thousands of thousands which in a Greek actually says myriads of myriads, an innumerable host. So let's read that again. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was unmeasurable, except to God Almighty. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Concerning the tremendous number, actually beyond comprehension, what a sound this must have been. Now, now, right here, a number only God could count of angels, all saying this at the same time. Let's imagine every human being on earth saying something, the exact same thing at the same time. That would not even come close. It wouldn't even compare 
to what would happen, what's going to happen, when an uncountable amount of angels all say this at the same time. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Through and by the cross, the sevenfold blessings is given to Christ and is given to us as well. Let us say it again and again. The cross, the cross, the cross. Verse 13. And every creature is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them. Heard I saying, the death of Christ as atonement is the ground or basis of the restoration of all things, and is applied in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. Blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne, God the Father, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. What Jesus, what Jesus did at the cross guaranteed a total defeat of Satan and all those minions of darkness, which will ultimately cleanse, cleanse heaven and earth in totality and forever. <clears throat> Verse 14. And the four beasts, living creatures, said, Amen. The, f- the four living ones say, Amen, to the fourfold blessing. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. This records the fact that not only is God inter- eternal, but what Jesus did at the cross will have eternal results as well. <clears throat> That's chapter 5. Let me um, take a moment to drink some water. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Before we read chapter 6, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do the Bible trivia. Who was worthy to open the sealed book in John's vision? Only one, the Lamb of Almighty God, Jesus Christ. And remember, Jesus, it was a slain lamb that came to grab that book. It was Jesus, but the symbolism was that he was a slain lamb, the lamb of God. Because of what he did, he alone was worthy to grab the book. How many seals? <clears throat> seven. Seven. What's the number seven? Seven is the number, it's the perfect number of God. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chapter six. Once again, this is going to happen. This is all this is going to happen. <clears throat> Chapter six. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, refers to the crucified risen Christ and is proven by the use of the word lamb. And I heard as if it were the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts, living creatures, saying, Come and see. This will follow the rapture of the church, but we aren't told exactly how long after the rapture the great tribulation will come. Come and see. Says that it is des- de- uh, destined and that can be and that cannot be avoided. <clears throat> verse verse two. And I saw and beheld a white horse, symbolic, repro- uh, proclaims the Antichrist, presenting himself to the world as a prince of peace, and who sat on him had a bow, mentions no arrows, he preaches peace, but is preparing for war, as symbolized by the bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The crown represents the fact that he will conquer many countries, at first, he does so by peace, but will quickly graduate to war. So, <clears throat> okay, this, uh, should I say something right now? All right, let me say something real quick. Um, this is worth doing a video by itself, but real quick. Who will the Antichrist be? It will be a, it will be a Jewish person. It will be a Jewish, a Jewish person. Sorry. It will be somebody from Israel. Because... Th- Israel would not accept anyone but a fellow Jew. There's no way Israel is going to follow a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, anyone else. They will only follow one of their own. So the Antichrist will be one of Israel's own. One of one of his will be one of their own. So we don't know 
what the name of the Antichrist will be, but we do know that he will be Jewish. So, <clears throat> but that's worth a video by itself. Verse 3. And when he, Christ, had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast, living creature, say, come and see. As we see here, all the events on earth are decided, first of all, in heaven. And there went out another horse that was red, portrays another symbol, this time war. And power was given to him, the Antichrist, who sat there to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Let's pause right there for a moment. Notice, um, to take the power was given to him, the Antichrist, who sat there and to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given to, unto him a great sword. This proclaims the fact that more people will be killed during the time of the great tribulation than at any other similar, similar time frame in history. Now, 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 li now listen to this. When Jesus came to earth, when Jesus was born and as he was alive on earth, did you know there was no war on earth? There was no battles. There was no wars. There was only peace. Did you know that? There was peace upon the earth when Jesus was on earth. Did you know that? Now, we look at the Antichrist who claims to be Christ, but of course is a, is a devil. They come to earth and they bring war, war like that has never been seen before. You see, the Antichrist is the opposite of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes, the, the earth has peace. The anti, Antichrist comes, there is death upon death upon death. This so verse 5, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast, living creature, say, come and see. It is as the previous two, opened by Christ, the time frame for this will most probably be in the second year of the great tribulation. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse represents famine, which always follows war. And he who sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, refers to the scarcity of food. It is meant to portray the fact. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. The world has rejected the cross, and the world now faces judgment. And see you hurt not the oil and the wine. This petition that the olive tree and the grapevine are not to be hurt is that these particular plants need no cultivation, hence their ruthless destruction is forbidden. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice in the four beasts say, come and see, presents a whore unprecedented proportions. Verse eight. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, symbolic of death. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, signifying that almost all who died went to hell. And power was given unto them over the earth, fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. This probably refers to the Middle East and its vicinity. Verse 9. And when he... And when he Christ opened the fifth seal, there was no announcement concerning the opening of the seal, as it had been with others. Yes, that, that is very noticeable. That's very noticeable. The other seals, you see that the one of the creatures said, come and see. But you see, with the fifth seal, we do see there was no announcement concerning the opening of the seal. Okay? Now we know. Now we know that really something's really going to happen. I saw under the altar, the altar of incense, the souls of them who were slain 
does not refer to an immediate eternate state where the resurrection has already taken place and all are now in heaven have glorified bodies. The word soul is merely used in the sense of identification and not as a state. For the word of God and for the testimony which they held corresponds with Revelation chapter 2 verse 11. And they, the souls under the altar, cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, pertains to far more than a cry for vengeance. More than anything else, it is a cry for the entire episode of sin and shame to end. It is a culmination of the cry of the ages. Do you not judge and avenge our blood on them who dwell on the earth? It is certain that the Lord will judge and avenge. Find that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, symbolizes the righteousness of the saints. You can find that uh, more chapter uh, 19, Revelation, verse 8. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren who should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. They will have to wait until the conclusion of the great tribulation, probably about another five years. Verse 12. And I beheld when he, Christ, had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, the first of several, and the sun became black as sackcloth hair, probably probably caused by the dust filling in the air due to the earth's quake. And the moon became as blood. Doesn't mean the moon was actually turned to blood, but that it became as blood. Again, probably referring to the dust particles filling the air. Now, could this be just dust particles? It could be. Or could it be God just makes makes the moon look like, makes the moon blood, look like blood, became like the look of blood. God can do anything, so we'll, so, um, we'll see. Verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, refers to meteorites or shooting stars, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. There will be a bombardment on earth of these meteorites, which will cause untold damage. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, pertains to the shaking of the heavens, which indicates uh, which which uh, instigates the meteorites. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. This proclaims the power of unimaginable proportions. The greatest thrust will more likely be in the Middle East. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and of the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains presents this as a wasted effort, for men cannot hide from God, as well it takes in everyone from poverty to plenty. And he said to the mountains and rocks, Foolish man now prays to the rocks. Now, this, this, now listen to this. Here you are, have reject, you rejected Jesus Christ, and you're alive during the time of the great tribulation. You are seeing all this happening. You're experiencing all this. And what do you do? Now, this tells you, this right here is a great example of how no good and evil humans can be. Now, these individuals, have they're, they're experiencing all these things we're reading. And what do they do? Do they fall on their face and repent of their sins and cry out to Jesus? No. What do they do? They cry out to the rocks to fall on them. Just just think about that. Just think about that for a moment. And it said and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. Are you kidding me? Pertains to God the Father. Let all understand mankind. And that means everyone is going to have to deal with the one who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. The Lamb is the Savior today, tomorrow, and tomorrow the Lamb is the judge. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath has come. 
The great day is the coming tribulation, which will last for seven years. And who shall be able to stand? This refers to the fact that no man set himself, set himself against God ever since the fall. Now man will see exactly how powerful God actually is. My God in heaven. So you see, even though people find themselves in this situation, they still reject Christ. Instead, they rather pray to rocks that the rocks fall on them and hide them and kill them instead of coming to Jesus. Only God can tell us why. Why are, why are so many people dead set on rejecting Christ? Why? Even when you see all this stuff, even when you see all these things, you still reject him. Only God could tell us, of course, sin is the problem, and the rejection of Christ is why. But why do they reject Christ so? Why are they so dead set? Why do they refuse no matter what? Only God could tell us. And after these verse, uh, chat. Okay, so that's wow. This is all right. It's chapter six. Um, what a way in it for the great day of His wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? No one. No one can stand against God because understand this. When God, when Jesus comes back, and God, when Jesus and God come back, they're not coming back to be lied about, blasphemed against. Jesus isn't coming back to be spit on, persecuted. Oh, no. Coming back with power. Coming back with a power that has not been seen before or will ever see again. Judgment has come. And who will be able to stand against the judgment of God Almighty? No one. Today is the day the Lord has made. Get saved today. Because this could break out. The rapture of the church could happen at any moment. It could happen right now. It could happen tomorrow, next year, five years from now. But be prepared. But the the moment's going to come where Jesus Christ is going to bring his people together. And then he'll unleash the tribulation. What portion of the earth was given to Hades and death to rule over? One fourth. I think, wait, what portion of the earth was given to Hades and death? All right, one fourth. They, can you imagine that? One fourth of the earth? That's a lot of death. What did John see when the fourth seal was open? Uh, the fourth, uh, let's see. We know we've seen, what was the fourth seal? I think it was the bow was the fourth one. Yep. The Nope. Well, I'll go back. What was it? Ah, that was the wrong answer. All right. Um, let's go. Let's go back. All right. So uh, God willing tomorrow, chapter seven, chapter eight. And as always, this is tremendous word. And the thing about it, this is all going to happen. This isn't a fairy tale. Everything we're reading is going to happen exactly like we're reading it. Now, who wants to go to heaven? Who wants to go to a lake made of fire? Today is the day. Jesus Christ died for you so you could be freed from sin. And by faith in him and what he did for you, you could be saved. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to live miserable. You can be at peace. You can have joy. And you can have a life of victory, righteousness, and holiness. But it's only through Jesus and what he did at the cross for you. This is the only way. God bless you. And God help us.